Hello there. I just wanted to bring um, profitability tests that I was doing out to the community here. Um, I'm, I was pretty burned out with uh, Magic Find and Uber Juicing Maps, and I just thought I'd present an alternative in case others were as well. Um, I decided to try the formed. Um, I was looking at some new compasses and things like that, and just hadn't done this in quite a while. So I just had some ideas and kind of got them together and gave it a shot. So I ran 75 sets of the form, so 300 maps and the accompanying 75 invitations. And this is about what I came up to on the numbers for it. Okay, so my process was, and what I would recommend to people would be, you know, prepare the farm, uh, buy and scour your map sets. If you farm them yourself, you know, scour them, uh, line them up, however it is that you want to roll them, that is. Um, scour works absolutely fine for this. Um, you're really just looking for completion out of the, the map themselves, and then, uh, yeah, the, the loop it therein is not the most uh, important. Uh, buy and roll your invitations. So if you're uh, hoping to roll in bulk, these these two are going to be the main uh, problem that you face is snagging, you know, 50 plus of each map or uh, 50 invitations is, is a little bit trying sometimes. But the trade site, you know, it'll get you there. So um, buying compasses is pretty straightforward. You can get on POE stack or uh, what is that? Wealthy Exile. Um, trade site, a lot less useful for that. You just go to TFT as well, which, you know, some people are against, but it's, it works pretty nicely. Um, obviously, get your Atlas set up how you like it. Um, take notes from mine here or completely do your own thing is perfectly fine. Uh, so the goal is to run your maps one after the next. Um, you run all four. Uh, for the Maven Witness, um, uh, specifically, and you want to pop your Delirium Mirror uh, immediately if it spawns in naturally. Don't engage with the Wildwood, um, just kind of a cursory clear of the map. Uh, these maps are really nice for Delirium, kind of a long snaking path, typically, or a long straight path in a lot of ways, too. Uh, and then you get to the end and there's a boss. You can either uh, end the mirror early at that point if you have difficulty with the bosses or go into the boss room and get some extra simulacrum splinters and stuff that way uh, from the bosses that spawn. Um, and then obviously you just kill the bosses. Uh, so once you, re once you accomplish that for all four maps, you're gonna have your Maven Witness for uh, the formed and you're gonna run that invitation. Uh, and then just repeat the process. I, I strongly recommend doing that, the whole process in bulk, uh, so trying to do at least 10 full sets, so 40 maps, 10 invites would be a good baseline of sorts. Um, you start getting into bulk quantity for, you know, you're going to get like five Maven's Ritz out of that, um, probably four or five Simulacrums, that sort of thing, uh, Delirium Orbs. All that sort of stuff so yep okay uh, as far as input output goes for the farm uh, you're just starting with maps I listed scouring orbs here as well um, I, I priced them in as well as you'll see soon but they're they're kind of rising in price so that was surprising that they ran up a bit um the invitations and I rolled them with chaos I didn't scour elk uh, usually I scour elk but it just got so tedious and again scours were running up and alchemies aren't you know unbelievably cheap or anything either so uh, and then your mysterious harbinger compass uh, and shaper guardian map compass these were the two that I decided upon just kind of kept things easy uh, grab two of them two of both of them slam all four into your map uh, onto your void stones at once and it you're good for eight maps essentially um, Mysterious Harbinger Compass adds Harbinger loot to each uh, map boss that you kill, and it puts a Harbinger in the, the final boss room. Um, the Shaper Guardian Map Compass gives you uh, one Shaper Guardian Map each map that you run, essentially. So what that uh, pertains to is you over-sustain your Shaper Guardian Maps, so I have them listed on the output here as well. You're going to get 
at least four maps from uh, this compass, just from running your four maps and killing the bat boss. And then when you're on your invitation, you're going to have a chance at dropping additional maps, additional fragments. So you over sustain maps and you get in excess of a fragment set per set, essentially. So I've developed some ratios based on them that I've got uh, documented in a bit here, too. Okay, so as far as output goes, kind of jump the gun, but you get a full uh, four maps at least, a uh, full fragment set for the Shaper fight. Um, if you roll 70% invitations, you're getting like five, maybe six Mavens, uh, or sorry, Crescent Splinters, so half of a Maven's writ. Um, if you try to juice your invitations more, you can get, you know, you can get your invitations up to like 120% now with corruption and such, so you can work towards a full writ, essentially, but I just kept it simple here. Um, and again, the Harbinger Compass gets you all the good Harbinger loot, uh, Nolman Orbs, Exalted Orbs, Ancient Orbs, Harbinger Orbs, and then Icing on the Cake, the Fracturing Orbs. Uh, so those those are by far just uh, you know the most outstanding drop that you can get is you can get multiple Fracturing Shards. Uh, I think I had five fracturing, fracturing shards drop in one map. That was very lucky, but, you know, it's possible. Um, and then because we've got some natural deli on this farm, you're going to get simulacrums, uh, delirium orbs, uh, and just a lot of more uh, potentially valuable loot. So a lot of cluster jewels that, you know, if you just hit the right mods or um, right item level, you, you can drop a... Item level 84 plus mana reservation, and there you got 60 div plus. So, for example, which that's something that happened for me in this farm. So, not not outstanding by any means. It's eventually going to happen. So, okay. Um, just going through some recommendations for the Atlas tree. So, some notes here. Uh, destructive play. This is pretty critical for this. Um, when you throw the Harbinger section on there, or yeah, Harbinger compass on there, it just, it's free, free loot. You're blowing up a map boss anyway, you know, you might as well fight one to three more and get your, with the Harbinger, the Shaper Guardian boss, and then at least one more boss that Maven provides, that's three Harbinger, uh, stacks of Harbinger loot that you're getting, and potentially uh, five maximum, so. It ends up being quite lucrative, uh, so I'd, I'd pretty strongly recommend uh, taking Destructive Play at least. Uh, Wandering Path, this is also really nice here. Um, it obviously disables your notables, but it doubles your, uh, your small passives, and there's a lot of small passives that work nicely with this farm, so yeah. Okay, uh, a couple optional ones here, Stream of Consciousness. Um, I wasn't throwing, you know, fragments or scarabs or anything on here. Uh, the extra base chance for map content was nice because there was, uh, you know, more chance at, at finding the Delirium Mirror or uh, it, in the, the midst of a Delirium Mirror having an Abyss or something to stall out that, that Delirium Fog a bit. Sometimes I was engaging with some of that stuff. Uh, but not not you know totally necessary, but I I thought it fit well. And then kind of the same deal, singular focus. Um, certain maps in bulk are selling really nicely right now. Strand uh, with the new div card, um, Mesa City Square, all the the typical Magic Find stuff as well. Jungle Valley, Burial Chambers, just all those in in bulk are selling really nicely. So I like to restrict my map drops down a bit and make sure I'm getting those better ones in particular. But if you don't have very many favorite slots, uh, that this might not make a lot of sense for you. Okay, just a couple more notes. Um, the small passives of interest that I took were map duplication. Um, it doesn't, doesn't apply to your guaranteed maps, so the Shaper Guardian maps that you get from the compass, you're not going to have a chance of duplicating that, unfortunately. But the other map bosses can drop Conqueror Guardian maps, uh, or Shaper Guardian maps as well, or Elder Guardian. So uh, it was not uncommon to get, you know, four 
uh, guarding maps from just that final room. So, you know, it's it's pretty nice when that does hit. Uh, I like that quantity rarity wheel on the Atlas tree. Uh, not necessary, but, you know, I got with scoured maps, I was up at like 54% quantity. So that's not anything to, to scoff at too hard at least. But uh, And then I, I took basically all the delirium notes, uh, all the small delirium notes. So it's, again, it's really nice layouts for them. Uh, you get a lot of lot of rewards because you're running along and even just kind of cursory clearing if you have some sort of AoE or something that's doing some spread fire damage. You're getting four, five, six rewards pretty regularly. So, uh, And then I was finding that I was getting Delirium maybe half the time, maybe more than half the time. It was pretty rare to, to get it none of the times in a set of four maps. Uh, it was also a little bit rare to get it all four times, but you know, two and three was was very common, and then one was kind of rare. But uh, and then just you know some dump stuff. So map tier just helps you get more T16 maps. Uh, I took all the harbinger small passives as well. Uh, just getting more more stacks out of those drops. Uh, chance for some natural harbinger get headhunter buffs and stuff. Um, there's some invitation nodes uh, that you aren't forced into with destructive play. I took those as well. Shrines, kind of, I, I have a fairly weak character uh, defensively, so that kind of buffs that up. And, you know, those are all just very flexible points, not necessarily uh, build or er, uh, farm breaking by any means. So, um, okay, so breaking down the cost, uh, I'm not going to read through all the notes and such. Typically, what I was doing here is I was pricing in bulk. Um, so I have items listed on the left here. Pricing them in bulk either on trade site or on like POE stack or something of the sort. Getting a general rate and then just multiplying out by, you know, 75 sets or 300 maps or whatever it was that I encountered for this total farm. So, uh, so for maps, uh, for Four maps, uh, the Shaper Guardian maps are 0.6 div per set. Um, trade site was pretty much in agreement with that as well at the time of writing, at least. So, uh, yeah, so 0.6 div per set. Um, scours, I really conservatively called it 300 uh, scours equal to 2 div. Um, I don't think you would be, uh, I don't think you'd struggle very hard getting 300 scours for 2 div at least, but. Um, the formed invitations, bulk purchase, it gets a little touchy on those. Um, they're, they can be low in supply sometimes, but typically they're uh, less than 1.4 div or so. Um, I was able to buy more than 10 stacks at 1.4 div. I think I bought a 25 at like 1.3, for example, each. Um, Chaos orbs to roll the invites. I made sure I included those in here as well, just to not miss anything. Um, the Harbinger compasses and then the Shaper compasses. And over here on the right, you can see the cost div column, kind of see what's what's popping out here. Um, the invitations themselves were the biggest factor here, followed by the maps and the, the Shaper compasses. But uh, I do pretty strongly recommend those Shaper Compasses if you don't have trouble uh, with the bosses because they do get added damage, added life, but um, it's it's really nice to just sustain your own maps and be able to, to run through it, make a big purchase of the Compasses and not need to trade for four separate maps or trade for just a bunch of maps and Horizon Orb them or whatever it is you're going to do. So, yep. So that came out to uh, total cost. Entire cost for the farm was just under 200 div, and this was a per set cost was 2.63 div. So four maps, and the invitation, and the compasses uh, for those four maps was 2.63 div. So going into the profit, um, this was a, a reduced set, so this was a very reliable uh, drop set that I I tallied up here. Um, and in this this sheet, what I what I did was uh, I produced um, an ex expected drop rate over the course of a set. So 
you know, I said 1.1 here, for example, for the shaper maps, that was me saying that for each uh, set of maps that I put in, I expected to get 1.1 sets out. So over the course of running 10 sets, you'd expect to get 11 sets or 44 maps when you only ran 40. So, uh, and that's due to uh, the invitations having a chance to drop uh, the Shaper Guardian maps, the extra bosses having a chance, the uh, same thing with the fragments, essentially. The invitations have the chance of dropping more. So uh, for all these items, I have a, a chaos price listed, uh, the expected drop rate, and then essentially an expected value uh, for that due to the average that I came across and the, the listed prices. So uh, Shaper map sets were 99 chaos. Um, that's 0.6 div at the time of writing, at least. So that was the same as the cost in the slide preceding. Um, Shaper fragment sets, I had that at 165 chaos. Um, that was one div per set in bulk. Um, so I was pretty pleasantly surprised to see that um, the fragment sets were, were so pricey, I guess, you know, uh, currency is kind of in a wonky state. Nobody's really bossing or running these necessarily, so not the most uh, lucrative thing. Everybody's jumping in the wildwood and trying to, to blow up 70 div currency conversions and such. But So, you know, there's kind of a niche market there where people still want to run Shaper, Uber Shaper and stuff and get their, their uh, big jewels that they kind of gamble on or sell for they're unidentified. You sell them for like 45 div right now. It's crazy, but yeah. Um, Maven's Ritz, these are really reliable in this farm. Um, you're dropping at least a half of a, a Maven's Ritz each invitation if you roll it to 70%. I came out to, uh, I came out above this, but I called it 0.55. I think I was at like 0.62 or something uh, expected, but you know, I, I've I thought that I had to adjust down because you know people might not run them if they they rolled up high and might have more exclusive uh, mods more more on their mod list that they had to ignore. Um, and then the next set here is uh, the Harbinger loot. So Nolman orbs, Harbinger orbs, Ancient orbs, Fracturing orbs. I excluded Exalted orbs. They were rare enough and they're not pricey enough that it, it just wasn't worth including uh, for consistency reasons really. Uh, um, simulacrums, so with the natural deli you're, you're getting a lot of simulacrum splinters. It's not uncommon to drop you know 120 splinters in a map if you're doing the bosses and you get the natural deli. Um, so what I found was I was coming across to half of a simulacrum per set. That was kind of, it fluctuated at times. Obviously you're going to get natural deli you know, sometimes, and you're going to have streaks where you don't, and um, things like that. Map, you might, like, soft rick a map or something gets stuck somewhere because there's some really nasty rare or something of the sort that you have to like, figure out how to get around. But And then along with that, you get just a lot of delirium orbs. Um, again, it wasn't uncommon for me to get three, four, or five delirium orbs in a map. Um, I don't want to say it was the regular, but um, you have to get your delirium mirror to spawn firstly, and then you know sometimes you not get any, sometimes you get one or two, but it's still pretty common to get several. So, um, so looking at at this fifth column over here, the expected earnings per set. Uh, here's what's gonna pop out as uh, you know where your money's really coming from. So the shaper maps, it feels kind of weird to include them here at all, but um, when you, I included them in the cost, so might as well include them in the earnings as well, I suppose. But this just washes essentially with the, the preceding and you get 10% more maps. So you, you come out a little bit ahead, but uh, the fragments, you expect to get about 1.2 div per set because your ratio is above one and it's like a div per set, so. The Maven's Ritz, uh, nice and pricey right now. Uh, a lot of people like to run Uber Maven and such. Um, all of these Harbinger loot items, fairly unimpactful. Basically, like two of 
two of the little ones pay for the compass and then if you get uh your your like ancient orbs are icing on the cake and then your fracturing orbs are just you know outstanding when they drop uh nearly a div per map uh expected value out of that fracturing orb drop just from slapping a compass on and having harbingers in the final room which you know some builds might really like to get those uh headhunter buffs and such in that final room still so especially against uh chimera the multiple phases is annoying but yep so then simulacrums they're priced at, at right right at one div per set or one div per orb uh so that came out pretty easy and then delirium orbs i had this listed at one div per 2.5 orbs or two div to five uh everything's pretty conservatively priced or at least it was at time of of writing and yeah, so your expected earnings with this really cons conservative, uh, more reliable drop sheet was coming out at 6.2 div. So pretty decent. So 2.63, 6.2, you're making, you know, maybe 3.5 div per set. Um, and then you've also got the opportunity for uh, crafting bases, fractured items, uh, raw divs dropping from mapping. I got several raw div, that sort of thing that I just didn't include in here. So, yep. So, again, I would just call this the real break bones. Like, this is the raw, like, base of what you would expect to get out. Um, Harbinger loot might be a little variant. Um, simulacrums, delirium orbs might be a little variant, but. You know, a set of 300 maps, I think, is a pretty decent sample size for that. So I hope I'm not too far off. But yeah, comes out pretty profitable. So, okay. Uh, and then just kind of an overview of why I thought this was a good farm. Um, it's pretty easy. It doesn't require any magic find. Um, Scoured Guardian maps, really easy to run uh, if you can boss at all. You know, you, if you have damage, you can just phase them, and if you don't have damage, you can just tank them. So it's not it's not too too hard. And then the invitations, you don't you don't have to roll them very hard at all to get 70%, and at 70% you're getting half a, a Maven's writ. So it's it's pretty sweet in that regard. Um, this also scales really well with clear speed and character power. So I saw that this could be. A really easy way of you know you get your first like 10 20 div or something pick up stuff for this or pick up compasses and farm your own maps something like that and uh, start running this farm and pretty easily get a decent amount of currency pretty quickly and then be able to upgrade your character run it faster by being either just faster as a character or stronger and you know, one tapping the boss or something like that. So, uh, and then you'd be easily able to to farm headhunter in just a few hours of gameplay because you're you're making like six div per set, easily doing three sets in an hour. So that's up near twenty div per hour. Headhunters are only like fifty sixty div this league right now. Um, and uh i so i ran some sets very very casually and was able to do three div or three sets in an hour and then i really try hard at a few and i was able to get like five and six sets in an hour which some people are going to put me to shame on six sets in an hour even so i didn't have the the zoomiest character at least so um you're able to self-sustain maps uh, with that Shaper Compass. Uh, you don't quite self-sustain invitations, but you know that's not too hard to pick up. You know, a handful of invitations periodically, and then same deal. You only really need to purchase the compasses and periodically the invitations. And the compasses are pretty pretty easy. We've got some decent tools for that. On you know, Poe Stack is what I used, and it's just very convenient, very easy to to snag those compasses so yep uh and then yeah the the primary items that you profit from or that i listed in the profit sheet they're gonna move very very fast the very liquidous um you're gonna you're gonna be able to sell mavitz writs if you price them 
competitively on the market, or if you have bulk pricing. Uh, I listed some. I listed a ten set, uh, and they sold within like ten minutes. It was it was pretty pretty nice to just restock at that point, restock some div, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, Maven's Ritz, Simulacrums, Delirium Orbs, Shaper Fragment sets, etc. They all move really well. And again, you've all also got that chance for very very lucrative bases, fractured items, cluster jewels. Again, I said I had a, a mono reservation, small cluster pop up. Um, I had a mirrored one actually, so the mirrored still sold for some reason. But you know that was a nice 10 div and then uh, 60 div, so pretty pretty sweet to have those pop up once in a while. Fractured items as well. A lot, of, a lot of bows that I was really interested in because I need to upgrade my bow, so it is what it is. Okay, and then I just have a couple uh, slides here that I, I want to pop up but not necessarily go through. So here's like an example boss of a map. Uh, the boss room drops with no delirium mirror, uh, several conqueror maps, uh, a couple elder guardians as well. The guaranteed chimera map and then just a bunch of um bunch of harbinger loot and a fragment so this is this is just bare bones the like the minimum of what you'd expect well i won't say the minimum the the guardian maps are not guaranteed by any means but you're gonna drop several of them so and then here's the same thing for a delirium map uh was happy to get that fracturing shard in there um, only got one Deli Orb here, 60 splinters, but it is what it is. And then here was an example of one, one uh, tab worth of maps that I had run. So this was 12 sets. I had a bunch of tabs lined up with, with four maps and then an invitation. And this was just the sample loop from it. So, you know, maybe 30 cluster jewels, um, a couple of awakened orbs. Not a, not a lot standing out otherwise. The Orb of Conflict. I should have included Orb of Conflict in the, the profit, but you know, I ended up getting what I get, like twenty five or so from this whole farm. So but yeah, uh decent amount of conqueror maps, guardian maps. Um didn't didn't include the, the shaper guardian maps here because I would have had, you know, forty eight uh, plus ten percent, so fifty fifty uh to 53 I guess um, yeah but just very consistent currency and you know and then here was just more notes so uh, if anybody wants to pause to kind of read through notes here this is some of what I was thinking uh, thinking through on pricing some of this stuff and developing the ratios and then here's just some more of it so okay that's about it um, Oh yeah, and this section down here is stuff that I disregarded that I thought was reliable drops, but it wasn't going to be uh, reliable in how you could price it in some way. So it was either rarer drops or you know very volatile pricing on the items. So like awakened gems, typically these are going to sell for you know the really cheap ones or 5C, 10C. Uh, several of them are going to be. 50 chaos plus 100 C, maybe a div. Uh, nothing amazing dropped for me. I don't know if Awaken Multi Strike and GMP and stuff can drop uh, from those invites or not, but that's that's all right. And then kind of the same deal with Cluster Jewels. Uh, you know, you can get some really nice ones, but it's it's definitely rarer to get those. So, yep. Okay. Well. That's about all I've got for this video, so thank you.